Side That's note, the, the launch button has just popped up. Um, so we might see a few more people joining. Um, okay. The first Get Set Up session I joined was before I interviewed with the company and, and it was early morning. It was 4 a.m. for me. And I had someone say, oh, Pat, I didn't, I didn't have my camera on at that time. I said, Pat, that's a familiar name. Are you from Denver? I said, no, not really. <laughs> not close. <laughs> no, other side of the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nick's joined us as well. Hi, Nick. Nice to have you in class too. Uh, <laughs> great. I saw you Do joined a right class now? about six hours out of time. Ah, oh, here comes some people now. All right. Uh, here comes Deepak. I'm I'm host again. Let me just make you co-host. Thank you. Uh, and away we go. All right. Hi. Uh, nice to see you, D Deepak. Lovely to have you in class. Excellent. Uh, great to have some faces coming into class. Uh, Nick, it was great to see you coming and joining us as well. So this is the, the inaugural one of using the new system. So that is great. Uh, I think it's great that it's it's being streamed so people are aware that we have a really good system now um, with with your the, all the things that you have put in place to make it safe for learners to be in. So I, I think that is so good and excellent. Well, your help. It's a deep back and Pat have done most of the work plus Pritesh who is asleep at the moment, I think. And Ronnie uh -huh. is not here either. So yeah, these guys oh. are done. Okay, right. We well, it's uh, there's a little hiccup at the beginning, but you guys will sort that one out. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, it seems to be going well. Let's just see. We've got nobody coming in. We're supposed to have eleven learners, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see what happens to the. There's one that's in the waiting room, so let's see if they've managed to get through. It's not. I I couldn't see who my learners were, so I haven't a clue who's coming in today. Um, but Terry. there are 11. Oh, yeah, Terry. I don't know if Terry was one of the people that booked or not uh, in my list of, of bookings because that doesn't tally very right. much with what actually appears. No. So uh, that will eventually improve, I'm sure, because of the new no, system. <laughs> uh, excellent. Oh, he's gone. I don't know where, they, where Kelly went, but they're not there anymore. <laughs> So this is going to be an interesting one. They were in the waiting room, they're not anymore. And if they don't hurry up, there's going to be nobody in my class. And that could be an interesting live stream class of James and I. <laughs> James, James and myself and the gnomes and the fairies. So that could be a very interesting class indeed. Um, so let's just see if uh, what has happened along the way. Uh, because usually, even if there are 11, we normally get four or five who do eventually arrive in class. But thank you so much, Deepak and Nick, for all the hard work you've been doing to and, and Pat to get us to a safe platform um, that then allows us to be able to teach without having to think on our feet all the time with strange people doing strange things in our classes. Yeah, so, can't be fun. Uh, I was saying to, to Pat, I was the first one to get that funny one that had um, 20 different people all on one app that came in at the same time. But that one only came in once, so we were very lucky. Hi, Terry. Nice to have you in class. Uh, is Terry Gaines? Can you hear us, Terry? No, maybe not. Oh, we'll wait and see. Uh, any? Hmm. Let's just give it a few more minutes with the new waiting room lobby and see if there's a problem. Ah, possible intruder, says James. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Let's wait and see what we've got. Uh, Terry, would it be possible for you to either tell me where you're from or uh, put your camera on for a minute just so that we can, I can see you and have you, everybody else has their cameras on. It would be really nice to say hello to you. 
Okay. All right. Now, let's see. Uh, we'll still give people, they've got one more minute to get into class before we lock the classroom. I'm not sure if they are in the new lobby or not. I see someone else is making their way over as well. Sue. Okay, super. Uh, the lobby it. has a list of attendees, Terry, and someone named Ewan. Okay, somebody new. Not. I've got a few that I saw coming in that were. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, a few that are, are my regulars that were coming in, but I don't see them in yet. Really? Uh, Yelini, I, I think I might have had Yelini once. Ah, oh. hmm. okay, here comes Yelini. Let's see. Uh, let's have a look. Hi, Yelini, how are you today? Good, good. <laughs> Ah, Hi. excellent. Hi, <laughs> welcome. Lovely to have you in class. We're using the new system of getting into class. So um, everybody is seeing how the lobby works and getting people in safely into, into class. And so uh, we, we are the guinea pigs today. So welcome. How did you find your experience of getting into the class? Was it easy? <laughs> Yeah, you mean happy to see you again. Remember last yeah. time? Yeah, oh yes, yeah. we did the building one. So that was awesome. Yes, I recognized your name as you came in. So it's great to have you back with us. All right, I think I'm going to start. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start and see if we can, uh, I'm going to share my screen. And if others come in, we will watch as they're about to come in or they can come and join us. All right, today we're going to talk about our fairy gardens and gnomes, and they're not just for children. My husband and I have great fun creating the garden. We choose the gnomes carefully. He's the gardener and he does all the hard work and the talking to the plants and the watering of the plants. I have the vision of what I want in my garden. And between the two of us, we've created a very beautiful little garden out the front of our property. Um, this little gnome welcomes everyone as they come through from the front door out onto the patio. He is sitting there in the little garden waiting to welcome everyone in. We have children coming from the houses further up. They come in to visit the garden to see how many new gnomes there are. My granddaughter also comes and they come and they, they come and check the, the gnomes and see if we've added any new ones to different parts of the garden. Now, as you know, we learn from each other. So it's perfect when you have your cameras on it makes it so so nice for us to have your cameras see what see your face and be able to see what you're doing if you want a recording afterwards you can request it at uh, getsetup.io help at getsetup.io those of you joining by live stream well welcome as well but you can't ask questions, you just have to look. So if you'd like to participate, the best way is to join, it's free, and register for your classes. Then you can take part as well in the class. And we're not paid to promote any items that we might show or talk about, they just happen to be something we've got. Right, a little about me. I live in Perth, Australia, as you know, Yiling. Um, I've been here for three years. I come from South Africa, where I lived for 63 years. Uh, I love uh, creating and making things, including puzzles. And I've got a wonderful love of animals, having lived in Africa and Australia now. And having been an educator for 44 years, it's so nice to change to being a guide and just to share ideas and to share things with you. So let's see what we're doing today. Our objectives for today are to create fairy garden ideas, 
gnome garden ideas, practical ways to create these gardens, and plants for the fairy gnomes and gardens. So if you look at the very first picture there, you can see they've used pots and pieces of pot to create a three-tier garden. And very often, if you've got a broken pot, what do you do with it? You toss it. But instead of tossing the pot, what you now do is you use it to create a garden of its own so that it's got this magical power that it looks so different to just being a broken piece of pot. The second picture on the other side shows us using old hanging baskets that we may have had and now the stand has broken. You can create your own three or four tier garden of different fairies, gnomes, owls, you name it. You can have those to create a lovely ambiance as you come in to your garden. So, when, we, when I started to research gnomes and fairy gardens, I realized that there's so much more to creating these amazing gardens. They can be from a tiny little teacup garden to using a tree in your own garden. And using that tree, you are able to just add little steps, uh, little doorways. You can get yourself little doorways at your local shops you buy them and that you then can just attach or you can make your own ones using uh, clay and stones you can create your own one and then you just attach that to the wood and so you can go up the tree as high as you like and create this magical garden almost like the faraway tree that the children read as a story there's different people living at different parts all the way up the tree. So you can have gnomes at the bottom and fairies in the middle and maybe a grumpy gnome living at the top. And so you can build the most amazing story, not only for yourself, but for others who come into the garden. They can use their imagination as well. I'm sincerely hoping that my son in South Africa will do this with my, my grandchildren because he's got a lovely imagination being an actor and let, let him use that creativity to create things in his own garden and then he'll be able to have some things for them as well. So we'll be able to um, do all our different things with them. So Gnomes are actually known for good luck, which is what James has just put into the, uh, the, the chat box. But we often forget that we can combine gnomes and fairies. Looking at the, you find just a single spot in your garden. I've got maybe five spots where I've got them gathered and collected and doing things. For instance, looking at this one, bottom of a tree, just at the base of the tree, put a few little stones, a few little pieces going up, a doorway, and a gnome. What a lovely thing if somebody's walking around the garden and they suddenly spot, hey, what's that? Oh, look, it's a little gnome entrance. And so you've got all sorts of lovely things. You can put little mushrooms at the bottom. Um, the boys can build the stairways. The girls can make the pretty, pretty flowers. You can do all sorts with it. You can also do um, when you've got a retaining wall, where you've got a lower part and then the retaining wall, use the retaining wall to create the garden, to create a little area for fairies, gnomes, whoever, by putting little houses, making little waterfalls, ponds, uh, using stepping stones, putting little stairs. The girls love to do the creative, pretty uh, decorative part. The boys enjoy the building of it. Let's make this into a rockery. Let's do this. Oh, we can put these plants in here. And I'll be showing you some plants to put into your garden. Yiling, have you got a fairy garden? No, I live in a city, so it's just park outside. So I just imagine I got a garden, but actually not. Now, what you do is you build it indoors. You put it in your apartment. Oh, you can okay. have it in a bowl. You can put it in a bowl. You can put it in anything. So it doesn't have to be outdoors. 
You can have your own gnome or fairy garden in your living room. You can even put a, a, one in your bathroom. You can have one where there's like a waterfall coming down, which I'll show you a bit later. Um, put that into your bathroom. It turns it into something special. It just makes a creative way of doing things. And so, How many yeah, gardens do you have in your I, house? I, fairy Sorry. gardens. I've yeah. got... Oh, probably about six different ones in different parts. And my garden's not big. Um, I've got, you'll see, I've got a few pictures where I've got one little section here and over here, I've got another one. And then I've got some gnomes climbing up a piece of wood. And so I set them out in different, and even inside the house, I've got fairy, I've got gnome gardens. So you can do it indoors and outdoors. And it can be from this size to an enormous garden, but it's entirely up to you and your imagination as to where you go with your garden. So you can start thinking about having something indoors. Now, we're talking a little about outdoors at the moment. So um, we've got all of, here is the first one we've got here, something old to something new. Using an old wheelbarrow, that can turn itself into a fairy garden by putting the, the wheelbarrow there, building a little house, either buying, building, making, you can create. Uh, I have designs for, for creating your own ones. And then you can make it go up the tree. If you put it next to a tree and put a little entrance way, it then creates a wonderful grouping of things. You've, also can take broken pots. Here is a perfect example of one broken pot. Now this you could put inside healing. Um, you have the base of the pot is still fine. Now the pot is broken. You take the pieces of pot and you build up different levels using a little bit of sand, a few rocks underneath. And then each level has something different on it. And so within one pot, you have created your own garden. And the sky's the limit as to how you create and what you do. You can make your things that you want. You can buy little things like a little swing here that I have that you can do. I will show you lots of different things in a, in a minute that we can use. You can buy your little houses. They are very cute little houses that you can buy. In fact, let's stop sharing and I'll show you a few of the things that you can put into it. Um, so you can have a little house. This you can make. I, I do show you how to make houses out of bottles, uh, plastic and glass. You can make wonderful little houses. You can even make your own house. Where's my house gone? Ooh. Oh, there's my house. I thought he'd vanished. I used a toilet roll and I created a little house with a little door. And then I put a light, one of these lights, these touch lamps underneath. And now if you look in through the door, it's all lit up and the house is lit up for the night, just done with using a toilet roll. So it doesn't have to be fancy things that you use. You can buy uh, swings or you can make swings just as easily and put a little gnome sitting on your swing or a little fairy on your swing. You can make fencing or buy fencing using popsicle sticks and then you can put the fencing around or those old plastic forks that you were forever tossing when you've had a takeaway and there's a plastic fork. The end, the tines of the forks make wonderful fences. And then you just stick them in the ground next to each other and you've got this fence going all the way around the property. So you've got that. And that just makes it so interesting to be able to use. You can use... These, these come from uh, the little forest next to us. These are seed pods. Now, if you put a fairy next to a seed pod, look how gorgeous that looks. The seed pod becomes part of it. And so you can use natural nature and uh, ceramic to be able to build different things. You can also use 
if you want a pot plant for the for the fairy to have a pot growing in, this is also a seed pod that has been found along the way. And you can put little plants, you can even grow a plant in there and put it into your fairy garden. So you don't have to have fancy things at all. It can be easy to use things. Um, what I love, you can make or use. Using your popsicle sticks, you can have fairy village, fairy forest, gnome home. You can create labels to go to the different places. So there is so much imagination that you can use to create your own very special fairy garden along the way. So now, I hope you're getting interested, Yiling. I'm hoping you're thinking that, yes, I can actually create a garden. Now, now this is my garden. So you can see in my garden, these are three different places in my garden. One is where I've got a water feature near the well, a bird bath, very near to the a wall, a little back retaining wall. On that, I've put some pots and I've got my gnomes reading. They are sitting there reading in the sun. And each of the pots, there are four of them, have one of these gnomes sitting reading. So, and he overlooks the garden. Underneath the bird bath, there's a little tray, which I think was supposed to be for more plants. I've chosen to put just a few little plants and some gnomes in there as well. Always put them so they can see each other. I found some wood in the forest or reserve, as they call it in Australia, and we carried it home and we put it in the garden and planted plants around it and then put some little gnomes that are busy climbing all over it. Uh, and so that makes its own little uh, gnome garden just by itself, just with these naughty gnomes climbing in and out of the wood. Another piece of wood that I also brought home, we have put laid flat in the garden and then planted plants over it and put gnomes in strategic places around the wood. So you use nature and uh, imagination together. Between the two of them, they create a really amazing garden that you are able to do. Now, Yelin, do you think you have got some ideas? Do you have any animals traveling inside in the, your fairy gardens? This is oh, something well, I'm really curious about. Oh, well, yes, you can put all sorts of animals. I have live animals. I have lizards that go in and out. I've got a bandicoot who actually doesn't like one of the gnomes. And no matter where I put this gnome in the garden, he kicks it over. It is the strangest thing. This bandicoot does not like them. and it's it's holding a football. It's doing footy. And the bandicoot doesn't like it. And he kicks this one over. I've had it in five different places in the garden. And everywhere I put it, he kicks it over. So we we have live animals going in and out, but there are beautiful little rabbits that you can get, the little tortoises you can get. There are lots and you can add them because they become the part of the, the gnome and fairy uh, creation. The fairy has a rabbit as a pet and the rabbit then lives in the garden and you plant baby carrots in that part of the garden so the rabbit's got something to eat. And so you... You put fantasy and fact together. Nature and fantasy combined create the most beautiful gardens. So my garden has mainly live animals trundling through. Now, it's really wonderful. Yeah. Here are multi-story gardens that you can build. Old tubs that you've got. Some people have lived on farms or they've used it to wash the dog and they've got buckets, old buckets, old basins. Take those and even old pots and you take those and you make them into multi-story and then into that you can then add a little ladder and then they can go from one level up to the next to the top where the house is. So each level can either be um, succulent type plants 
or there are so many little plants, plants that don't grow too big, uh, that you can put there to be around them and about them. We will talk about the flowers just now that go with them. But you can make the most peaceful, tranquil little gardens with teapots and you can have a little um, rabbit hut. Uh, rabbits are one of the best ones that they always have tortoises. They always have tortoises because the gnomes and the fairies can ride on the tortoise. And so you always use the smaller of the animals that we have in the animal kingdom as part of your creation. But it's entirely up to you as to which ones are your favorites. You can put little fences with tubs and then have, as, as you can see in the middle there, you've got the tubs. All they've done is taken sticks and stuck them onto some plastic. And that then makes the little arches that go from one level pot to the next level pot up to the top pot. And so they are able to climb up and down the different pots and get from one garden to the next. So, uh, the one in the middle at the bottom, again, it's a broken pot. And all the pieces of the broken pot have been used to make different levels, almost like steps to get up to the top part of the garden. So don't ever throw away your broken things. You can use them to create gardens of any description. The one on your left-hand side is also a broken pot, and the pieces have just been strategically placed next to each other with the plants growing in between to create multi-story. So don't believe that only flat is where you have to go. It's not. Now, when you're building your gnome and fairy garden, you need to know some of the sort of plants that will grow well in those gardens. So you need small plants and you need to know that most plants will stay small depending on the amount of soil they've got. So if they haven't got too much soil, they will naturally stay sm soil. Uh, small. So you need to use small plants, small rocks, um, little gemstones, little sort of stone pieces that you can use as well to make pathways. Uh, you've got, oh, I've left that one behind. You can make a stone and just write welcome on your stone um, and things like that, that you can put around and you can create the most amazing furniture. I will show you a little towards the end. But now you've also got the types of plants. You've got balsam, you've got asparagus fern, it's nice and fluffy. You've got moss, you've got impatience, uh, you've got scotch moss, you've got two different types. Verbena work very well. Hen and chicken, just make sure that it only has a little soil, otherwise the hen and chicken will take over everything. And of course, you can always use your succulents. They stay small naturally. And Salonia also is very pretty, gives you color in your garden. And so you are able to grow some really beautiful things. But if you want them to grow a little bigger, you can use different herbs. So you can have a herb fairy garden. And then those herbs you can use in the kitchen. You can use them in the, so you can have a fairy garden placed in your kitchen that grows herbs. And you can grow creeping thyme. That's that purple one at the top. Or you can have woolly thyme, which is the more fluffy one. You can have um, dwarf rosemary. You can use chives. So you can use all sorts of different ones to make your garden look pretty. And then you can just break off the pieces of them. You can use basil. Basil also stays small if you keep the pot small, if you keep the soil small. And then you can break off pieces, use them to cook, and it continues to grow. So you have a living fairy or gnome garden that lives in your kitchen. You can also use strawberries. You can use um, verbena, uh, violas. You can use baby carrots. 
Um, you can use cherry tomatoes. They are wonderful. You can grow those uh, and have them growing. Just make sure you keep them miniature. They don't grow too big if you keep them small. And the pot is small enough. They will stay small. And that gives you color in your garden. And the tops of the carrots give you this lovely fluffy green for, for the to make the garden look green. And of course, you can eat your mini carrots as well, your baby carrots. And then if you wanted to turn it into sort of a tree type garden, then you bonsai your trees. You keep them small, you keep cutting them down, you keep them low. You can use things like a dwarf conifer, uh, the alpine or the spruce or the hemlock or even juniper, you can take those and just make them small and keep them small. And then you can even keep them in their pots that you've grown and, and worked with and just bury that under the soil where you are growing and then where you are putting your garden. So you can't see that, in fact, they are restricted in size with their roots. But if, as far as everybody else can see, they are they are growing naturally in the ground because you've buried the bottom of your pot under the underneath. But you can keep them in their pots, like on those stairs where it says bonsai. You can put your little gnomes and fairies playing in between there with a swing or a slide or something so that it's like a playground that you've created there on the side of your stairs. And if children come by, they will play with them for hours. They will come and fiddle with them, move them around, put them in different places. And I know that with my own children, even though they were boys, I had a small uh, garden and I would move the things around. And then they would say, oh, it moved. It was over there. And then they'd ask their brother, did you move? And he'd say, no. And I would just walk away. And they they believed that there wasn't any such thing, but they couldn't work out just exactly why these things had moved. And so there was a little bit of interest and excitement in that as well. So now, here are some things that you can make. I do give you, a, 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 as part of the notes, a way of making some of these. So here, if you take three bottles and you put them together like that, you can end up with a little house like this. And all you do is you take clay and you mold the clay around the bottles. And then from there, and you can then put lights inside the bottles that you can uh, light up and, and then the whole place lights up beautifully. Or you stand it on one of those touch lamps and you can then just touch it and you can make it light up. So there are ways to create that. You can make little balconies on your trees by just making little boxes, taking little boxes, painting them with a water resistant paint so that they don't disintegrate straight away. And you can create your own windows in a little wall on, on a tree. You can create your own. This is the one I was thinking of for you, the one in the middle for in a bathroom. You take shells and beads and you place the shells strategically on top of each other and you use glue to hang down and you can even add a little bit of glitter to the glue and then this glue just hangs and it looks like it's a, a waterfall hanging out of the and, and coming down and it, you don't have it doesn't have to move it just gives you that optical illusion of the movement of the water all the time down there now if you had that in your bathroom and then you placed some things around it it can make a really beautiful creation and do something really beautiful with that um, using little pieces of wood, if you break off sticks as you're walking, cut those sticks into little bits and you can create a bench, you can create a bridge, you can create a swing, you can create so many different things along the way. And so it, it, it's, it, it depends on whether you want to spend time creating and making your own 
which I think is a wonderful thing to do. Get some ideas. You get them many, many ideas on Pinterest. You can find them. And then from there, you are able to build and make the things that you want to make and do. People put up the most amazing videos, the most amazing patterns of how to create. I actually have to work out which ones I can use and which ones I can't because they're just too many. My lesson um, uh, that we have uh, in the time that we have available, it is, it is amazing. So you can create bridges. You can um, create swing, um, uh, seesaws, slides, you name it, using sticks using stones and make a little garden that way as well. The last picture I've got there is beautiful. It's a good, it's you, it's, you often can, can buy them. They, they like a um, pumpkin, but they've got a much harder skin on the outside. But you, you can use a good, or if you don't have a good, you can find something similar, even a, a butternut. If you scoop out the top of the butternut, you've got the butternut shape that you can use. You could even make a pumpkin one. You could scoop out the inside of the pumpkin and make a pumpkin one. And then you take pine cones and you break off all the pieces of the pine cone and you rebuild it on top of the, the house. So you get, you start and you slowly build all the way around from the bottom. You start and then you place the next one on top and the next one on top. And so it's like doing the tiles on a roof. And so you build it that way and you build up your little house that and put the roof on it. And then you can put windows, doors and plant it in your garden, in your house. You can have what... The, the best idea is to go to the nursery and get yourself the biggest base for a pot that you can, either plastic or ceramic, and that becomes your garden. And then you build from there. So you can have a flat one, you can have a bigger one, you can plant the different things in it, and you can create an amazing garden in your apartment. It doesn't have to be outside. You can do it inside and you can have so much fun building and creating using your imagination along the way. There are, are just so many things. If you've got a park in front of you, go and see what's falling from the trees. I mean, these two fell out off the trees. That one, which I think is such an interesting one. And, and this one, both of them fell off the trees. And so you just walk past them. You walk past it. Something has fallen off the tree. Oh, pretty. It's seeds have gone. It's gone. But it hasn't. There's all of this. In fact, that the one, the first one I showed you, I picked up this. Let me just stop sharing for a second. I picked up this yesterday. Um, and this is it before it pops open. And so it's got like a little hairs all the way around it. I've kept the piece of a tree that was attached to it as it had fallen on the ground. And this is before each of these have popped open. This can also be used as part of your garden. So look in your parks, you will be amazed as to how easy it is to create these sort of things. How, how easy it is to be able to use what is around without having to go out. And now you are incorporating natural nature in with your garden. And so for me, that is, is a very special thing. Now, before we, we share again, have you got some ideas? Have you got yeah, something? The key thing is first go out and then keep collecting things from the park. Otherwise, yes. you know, it's just park is park, home is home. But actually, park can be something connected to home. This is of something course. I get in university. Right. So now you've got a start for your garden.
And so collect them, just get a box, put all the different bits inside, then go and go, go shopping and look and see. Um, in, in Australia, there are so many shops that have got gnomes. Gnomes are very, very popular and so are fairies, but gnomes particularly. Uh, you can go and you can get all different sizes. I've got gnomes from this size to that size. So they're all different sizes that you can have. And then from, obviously, if you're doing an indoor one, you'll be using the little ones. And then you use them to create a, a design. Then go and find some plants. Start putting your plants into your garden. See, make, make a drawing. I want to put a little river here. I want to put some stairs going here. I want to do, and you create your environment that you're wanting to build. Then from there, you look and you say, what will I grow on this level? What will I grow on this level? What will I grow at the top? Now, where am I going to place things? Am I going to have the garden at the bottom and the houses at the top? So there's all sorts. Oh, James has found us some Earth Fairy garden kits. So you can go and investigate that and see uh, if that, that you can go online and maybe get something straight offline that is what you would like. And then you can put um, the, those things into your garden and you can create little uh, spades and forks that stand there and you get little um watering cans and so on and so forth. So you really can create some amazing places and things. So I really suggest you start with your imagination, get an idea in your mind of what you think it's going to look. It never looks like it, you think, because along the way, different ideas come in or you see different things. I would also go on, on Pinterest and have a look at other people's ideas of gardens and take a little bit from this one and a little bit from that one. And, oh, I like that. I can take that from that one. And you take ideas and you pull them together to make an idea that is yours because you want something that is intrinsically you. And once you've done that, then you will have your own authentic fairy or gnome garden and put little animals in you love your your animals go for it you there are beautiful little ones that you can have popping out from behind a, a mushroom and you you can when you get two things you look at them and you go okay what am I going to do with these two things oh he could look out from behind here now where am I going to put him oh he could go on this level over here or he can go behind here or so you create your ideas and with that you'll really be able to do some amazing things with your creations as you go along so when you finish I want a picture please healing you can send it to me at help at get set up and then I will be able to see what you have created. So this time I have a homework. <laughs> Aha, you do have homework this time. But it's something that you will be able to, and you can continue to change. It's not a static thing. You can change it. You can add to it. You can uh, think, oh, no, this, this, I need something else over here. Let's start a new one. Let's have this or that uh, and so you can build from there and you're able to put your things together so for me it, it's very exciting that people can do it now these are just a few more simple ideas that you can put together you can even use a basket it doesn't have to be something big it can be small Here's a basket, and look, she's got a rabbit in here, and the little fairy is sitting on a bench. You've taken a Lego tire and turned it into a swing. You can turn a, um, a bottle cork. You dig a hole in the bottle cork and put a little cap on top, and it becomes a birdhouse. Very beautiful little birdhouse. You make it out of a cork. You can make a little river or take a shell and put water inside the shell. And now you've got your pond. And so 
uh, you are able to create some really amazing things in a very small space. You can have archways, then choosing the right flowers, making sure they all stay small enough or that you can trim them small enough, you will be able to create a living garden in that basket. So don't be shy of what you choose to use because baskets are baskets, pots, uh, dishes, um, salt cellars, you name it. You can use all sorts of things to create. Uh, you can also make your little gardens outside. You can see the different things that have been used to make the different types of creations. This fountain is, in fact, the end of something that twisted at some stage, was broken, and has now been turned into a fountain. And so oh. now you've got the fountain in the garden. So look around at things that you've actually got, things that are broken or things that are not working so well, and use those to create something special. I have a project that I'm hoping to do. I have a jar and it's got a lid on it um, and the lid has a teapot on top. Now I want to turn this into a fairy house with the teapot as the feature on top. So oh. there's a little house underneath and the roof is a teapot. And then if I want to light it up, I can take the lid off, put a, a tea candle inside and not put the lid on too tight so that it's able to breathe and it'll be able to light up the little house. So that is part of one of the projects that I'm working on at the moment. So you can see there is so much imagination that can be used in these. You are able to create awesome different things along the way and in that way <clears throat> you are able to see and use things around your home that a thimble mom granny's old thimble that she used to do her sewing with that makes a wonderful bucket for the fairy to use you there's just so many things that you can use bottle tops bottle tops make wonderful lids uh, bottle tops also make stepping stones for the fairies to be able to walk on all the way up to the top. So there are all sorts of things that you can use that is creating from what you already have in your home and then just turning them into interesting things that go with them. And as I said, from the smallest, from the size of a teacup, right the way up to the size of a garden. And so you can really, your, the sky's the limit with your creativity and your creations. Right, Yeling, you got some ideas? Really wonderful. I, I feel every time I attend your class, it's like something gets inspired in my mind. Maybe sometimes it'll turn something into real. Good. Well, I hope you're going to do it. I hope you're going to create it. I really do. I hope you'll be able to build with building with when we did our structures one. You hope when you went and tried some structures uh, with jelly tots or <laughs> the different things. And now we've got this is working with your imagination and creating something really beautiful for yourself and anybody else who happens to come to your home. They will all be inspired and suddenly you'll have all your friends creating their own gardens because it's unique, it's different. There are no two gardens the same. Every garden is different. So it's not as if it's something store-bought. Hello, here you are. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Now here's something unique, something that never, nobody else has made because each person puts their own personality into their gardens and turns it into something special. All right, well, thank you, Lei Ye Ling, for being in the class today. You were definitely the guinea pig for us. We were expecting, I think, 12 people, only you managed to get through, uh, which was great. <laughs> and I'm delighted that you were able to get into class and be with us. Uh, some of the other classes I'm doing is what's on your bucket list, come and make friends, uh, trivia quizzes, 
Uh, trivia quiz is a bit old for you because it's the 70s and you weren't around then. So uh, that's a bit, a bit older. Um, we're playing games like Scattergories and that's for any age. Scattergories is a lovely one to play. We do that next week. Uh, road trips, places we've been, things we've seen encounters with wild animals, things that we've done and seen with other with animals. So there's lots for you to be able to come and see at another time. All right. We'll see you next time. Good, good. I'm delighted to have you back in class. I'll send you an email with all the information. And uh, if you'll fill in your feedback, just so we get an idea of what we can add or change or how you enjoyed the class. Uh, and I will send you some new ideas as well. So if you want to invite friends, when you book, there's a new feature on the app where you can invite a friend to come and join you. Uh, you just click on that and you can send them an email inviting them to join the same class as you. And then you can talk about it afterwards. And any of the pictures have to come to help it get set up for me. And I'm going to start a page of all the things that people have made. Um, and then we will be able to have a, a get together of all those things that this way. Oh, you made that. Oh, I made that one over there. And we will invite you to come and see all the different ones. Has but anyone thank already sent you garden pictures? Oh, I've got, I've got. I have, yes, I've got um, animal pictures, I've got bird pictures, I've got garden pictures. One lady did it in a toilet, an old toilet. She put the old toilet outside and she's decorated it. I've got those. Yes, no, I've got quite a lot of pictures that are coming in at the moment. And so I am building on that. Uh, and so it's really hopefully going to be something really special where we will be able to have everything done. Uh, and be able to do it so all right thank you so much Yeling. Thank, thank you so james for being with us and for putting all those little bits and pieces in the background um, so that where are ideas for you to do have a great day Yeling. bye you. for now thank you, and thank you james